buddy? Hi, guys. Well, from beautiful, if perhaps too hot, Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, Dan, we're going to be talking (laughs) about, uh, since it is this patriotic season in America, uh, it was just the 4th of July, Independence Day, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about sort of America. Yeah. And uh, some some things that we maybe grew up believing about America. Yeah. Um, I mean, grew up believing. We were specifically taught... (laughs) Things about America. <laughs> this is a land of the free and the home of the brave, and we're going to discuss it. Oh, my God. No kidding. Well, Dan. Yeah. I think I've got something that, uh, that in, 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 in sort of that spirit, Dan, um, I want to talk about um, the, the presidential election that's coming up. And I think. Oh, are we having one of those? I Yeah. And I think, Dan. That it is time that we, as a podcast, make our endorsement. Oh, for for president. <laughs> okay, um, uh, one Mister Kanye West. That's who. Uh, that's who yes. should be president of these yes. United States. Don't you think so, Dan? Well, I mean, I feel like it would be racist for me to say no. <laughs> God, really? Just kidding. <laughs> it would. It is uh, of all of the ideas, and believe me. At this moment in history, in our country, we have only bad ideas for president. <laughs> it's it's just a matter of which is the worst idea. Like, on the scale of bad ideas, there's one that's, like, way, way, way better than the other, than the other ones. But it's still a bad idea. But that's fine. <laughs> we'll move on from that. Uh, yeah. So Kanye, I don't know. I, man, who would be worse, Kanye or Trump? I can't. I literally can't imagine... One oh, being, um, I, they're both just they're both absolute self-serving crazy narcissists. narcissists. Yeah, narciss- that's the word I was leading to. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's I think they would be the same thing. Yeah. I, I, if you want, if you want four more years of Trump, you could easily vote for Kanye West. Um, right. As many people who have. Uh, felt like they deserved to be president of the united states uh he believes that god told him to run for, uh, for the presidency of course he yes does. uh he is uh nothing if not a crazy lunatic of a christian <laughs> um he uh he, he says i love jesus christ i love christianity um god just gave me the clarity and said it's time well, so. God's timing is terrible because he needed to file paperwork <laughs> months ago. No, no, in no, order no, for this, no, Dan. No, in no, order no. for this to be any kind of real thing, he's <laughs> he, he is way behind. God was uh, was really slow on on well, the uptake yeah. with this, and one. and not only has he not filed any of the proper uh, paperwork, he's also. According to him, he's never voted once in his life. Um, but again, that level of involvement and care that that he has demonstrated, mm. um, mm-hmm. you know, like that clearly he, he would he he deserves to be president. Um, he believes that God appoints the president. Mm. Um, you know, and this mm. is not an unheard of belief amongst conservative Christians. No, no they, they... although it doesn't explain all of the presidents that they don't like. <laughs> right. Like... Or the absolute, complete, utter disasters of presidents that they have liked. Right. Right. That, yeah. that, uh, that's, but somehow, who were just really uh, quite amazing. He says that, he says, let's see if the appointing is for 2020 or if it's 2024, he says. Because uh, God yes. appoints the president. If I win in 2020, then it was God's appointment. If I win in 2024, then that was God's appointment. And if you God. never come even close to winning, <laughs> also God's appointment. Like this then is like Satan got in the way. Yeah, but how do they? How does somebody like you know? Because like um, you know uh, Michelle Bachman, right? Yeah. Um, Herman Cain. 
Rick Perry. These are all people who stated sort of the same thing, right? That they sure. believed that, that God called on them to seek the highest office, right? Yeah. And sometimes it's like he calls m- multiple in the same election. Right. Right? In the same... I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure that back in 16, like six of the 42 Republicans <laughs> who were up on the dais trying to r- debate each other. Mm-hmm. We're all called of God to be there. Yeah. And I, 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 like, how does that, how do you not, like, do you not believe that the other person was called? Right. Do you, like, oh, pff, were you, they weren't called. Was your calling I was called, real? I was called, not you, Michelle Bachman, right? <laughs> Clearly not you. Michelle Bachman. Oh, my God. Who would, nobody would, pff, that nobody woman. would call that woman to be president of the United States. Nobody would call Rick Perry to be president of the United States. Yeah. But people kind of liked him. And some oh, people like Lord. her. That's what's insane to me. Yeah. I. The question is, who likes Kanye? Because here's the thing. <laughs> I. The second he announced this, my Facebook feed lit up with people going, great, he'll siphon fo- votes off of Trump. And then other people going, holy shit, he's going to siphon votes off of Biden. Everybody... Make sure this doesn't happen or whatever. And it's like, yeah, he actually has the potential to just, I don't know where his votes would come from. <laughs> from nowhere. Like like you said, he's not actually running. No. Um, but, any, but he, uh, you know, I mean, he's famously been a Trump supporter, but he's he's become disillusioned with the president. Yeah. Um, well, he says tiger it, energy is a tricky thing to maintain. He says it looks like one big mess to me. Um, he's called on both uh, Trump and Joe Biden to bow out, saying, <laughs> saying it's God's country. We are doing everything in service to God. Nobody but God can can um, nobody but God. No more. I am in service of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I put everything I get on the line to serve God. This guy's completely off the deep end. Yeah. Yeah. And also cannot imagine that there is anything that is closed to him just like our current president yeah. who ended up being right so i'm not going to make any predictions <laughs> who knows maybe <laughs> kanye is going to be the next president nope. of the united states of america nope. anything's possible ours nope. is a nation of fools <laughs> anyway speaking of a nation of fools i'm going to talk about that foolish nation's highest court the oh, supreme yeah. court the scotus the uh, the uh, the the country's final word on matters of 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 law, mm-hmm. uh, and they've had a couple of decisions recently. Uh, man, they are just on fire with the decision making. Yeah, uh, including, and I should remind our listeners that all every la- that there are no uh, avowed atheists in our highest court. Uh, there are just Catholics and Jews, right? Is that all there is? Still, um, is Kavanaugh? Uh, no, no, he's no. Catholic. He is uh, Gorsuch. Catholic. Gorsuch is uh, Episcopalian. Oh, oh, well, then they've infiltrated <laughs> the, the the Episcopalians are in. <laughs> but Anywho. I can't. I can't remember. Gor- Gorsuch has a history of not being Episcopalian. I don't know what he was before. I don't remember. But I mean, there he, was that time in college when he when he when he, you know went went through a, tried a weird. Ca- he tried Catholicism. You, yeah. But it didn't take. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) uh, yeah, exactly. Um, Here's the thing. Boy, are they really, they have torn down that wall of separation between church and state just brick by goddamn brick. Maybe they're Mm. reusing the bricks for Trump's wall. Who knows? Uh, But here's the deal. Uh, So uh, listeners will remember from last week that there were some some decisions that they had made, including one that seemed great, which was, uh, what was the one? Oh, it was, it was the abortion one. They did a good abortion one. Uh, and then, and then what, uh, now it's just all shit. Uh, other than the, the ruling that they did today against Trump, uh, and forcing him maybe to give his tax, uh, returns over, which is kind of funny. Mm. What they got now is, uh, a couple of rulings. One, uh, which is about uh, birth control and the fact that no uh, no company that has a religious 
side to it, a, a religious uh, mandate, should have to do birth control for their for their employees. Mm-hmm. How dare they? <laughs> so, uh, in uh, in in a seven to two ruling, which is kind of surprising, they have they have decided that uh, you can't force a religious organization to provide birth control for women, or as I like to call it, abortion prevention pills, which right. is. It's insane that they don't see that, but there you go. <laughs> the second ruling that's really baking my noodle is that they are they have ruled on ministerial exceptions, which is to say that if you run a religious organization, doesn't have to be a church, doesn't oh have to be a church. What? Uh, okay. And you you can basically and now here's what they've done. They've made they've carved out the broadest possible definition of the word minister. So oh, no. uh, any religious organization can basically make pretty much, they make the call on what's a minister in their organization. Right. And if, they, and if the person is a minister, they can fire that person for any reason. Oh, so no. teachers in, in religious schools... They can fire them for any reason. You know, if they want to make a janitor a minister, they can do... You know, if you're a docent at the Ark Encounter, good luck if you want if you want to sue for religious... Dis- or for any kind of, you know, wrongful termination, because they can do whatever the fuck they want. Oh, my God. It's a, it is a land with special privileges just for the religious, and that's where we live now. Well, Dan, let's become a religious yeah. organization. I've I've been saying that for years. Yeah, the the Might TGIA be should be a religion. Might I don't know why, because then yeah. I can finally fire you for like no reason. <laughs> finally, <laughs> you, you've been looking for an angle on that one for forever. Uh, and you'll counter fire, I'm sure. Right, right. We're both fired. <laughs> Damn it, we did it at the same time. Now who's running the company? There's a vacuum. <laughs> All right. Well, Dan. Yeah. Um, COVID-19. It's, uh, you know, as it's been pointed out, we're we're just mired in the in the first wave of this. Uh, I, I don't this. even believe in it. <laughs> you know, right. It's not um, even a real thing. It's surging. We're having our summer surge. People have called it. Well, one thing that people like to do, at least, you know. Some a lot of people like to send their kids off to uh, summer camp, right? Yeah, and, sure. And uh, there's a network of Christian sports camps in Missouri oh called. You just said a whole bunch of words that make me cringe. <laughs> I just I don't like any of those words. Well, I'll wait until you hear the name of the damn thing. Uh, <laughs> the Kanakuk camps. There are too uh. many K's in that. Let me tell yeah. you, there's, there's actually a suspicious number of K's in, in the, Canada. There's a concerning um, amount of K's in that, yeah. <laughs> uh, nonetheless. It's KKK concerning is what it yeah. is. And, of course, they spell camp with a K. And they refer to their the kids that go to the, the camp as campers with a K. Oh, um, my God. It's just really gross um anyway they uh they decided against all better reason uh to open their camps uh at the beginning of may um even though missouri the leaders and health departments were like "Mm, maybe not the best idea but they let them do it anyway um because uh the leaders of the camp were confident uh, that they had made all the necessary plans for any potential COVID-19 outbreak and that it just wouldn't happen, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> needless to say, 82 <laughs> kids and staff are now infected with coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, because one of their camps, known as K2, uh, these people, um, they are obsessed with Ks. Um, it does feel, here's the thing, I get it, like you want to use a a wacky misspelling because it's fun for the kids or whatever right uh or because you know the first word starts with k and you want to continue it or whatever sure. but if there's even a, the remotest chance that you, you could that your organization could be linked to the ku klux klan <laughs> and you can't see that and yeah. make a ba- make a better decision well i would just love it if 
uh, in their email that they sent out about COVID-19 that they had actually spelled COVID with a K. I mean, that would have been right? more fitting for the, the cute little thing that all the kids got. Uh, well, they've, clo- they've closed K2 down. Um, sent everybody home and the email sent to the parents uh, says as your camper returns home we recommend that you consider a 14 day self quarantine for your child (laughs) and monitor for symptoms of COVID-19 yeah of course Um, the should have done that before they went to camp yeah they should have right (laughs) like camp should have there should have been the camp quarantine prior yeah. to starting camp it is a sports camp for christ's sake uh um, yeah and how do you spell quarantine with a k uh kw it's cuter that way it's cuter that way i think <laughs> quarantined <laughs> for Quarantine. covid um right. yeah like holy crap so um again christian christian's just flat out ignoring this damn thing I saw yeah. a thing today, Dan, where it was like it was posted online, and uh, it, was, it was it was you know like it said something about how non-believers are far less likely to actually get COVID nineteen, and like all the responses were yeah like, like no shit right right we're not going to church what we, we're not because we what have we some... believe in is reality right we we like to sort of pay attention to that mm-hmm. yeah. It's nuts. I, you know, it's to the point where I see all of these stories about pastors getting it or about like an entire congregation ignoring it and getting it. Yeah. And, it and it's not even, I don't even consider it for the show anymore because it's too common. It's just, I know. We, I just assume that everybody knows that that's all that's happening in the country. Like half of us are trying to avoid it and half of us are like sticking our head in the sand and yeah. singing hymns. Well, I mean, it is literally all that's happening dan it's yeah. like either nothing's happening right. in your life and you don't have covid right, right. or you're you know or things you're are de- happening in your life and you're just like and you're flagrantly go going on about your 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 business and i mean it's not like you're it's a guarantee but you're out there it's yeah. possible yeah, and you don't all, have the right to sudden, be surprised when you get it. Yeah, that's and for then all sure. of a sudden, everything gets more interesting for a few weeks. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Ugh. All right. Well, uh, I'm gonna here here in these United States, uh, b- before COVID and even after, probably I don't know. Uh, there was people love their uh, their nightclubs. You know, go oh, out and yeah. dance, get get a drink, have some fun out of the out of the club. Oh, there are a few things I enjoy more, Dan. Right? You and I are definitely club people. <laughs> you you start playing that electronic dance music, oh, and we can't are hold, there. I can't. My, my EDM gets going. I can't yeah. hold still. Oh yeah, I, I grab a couple glow sticks, pop a molly, and I am gone. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, the, there are some people who have, uh, you know, the, the clubs, they got to choose how to decorate. They got to figure out how they're going to make their place stand out yeah. as, uh, as a, as cool as hip, whatever. <laughs> Where is this and, going? uh, a, a whole bunch of clubs have apparently opted to go for religious in- symbols including things like, you know, you throw a Buddha in as a nice decorative touch, which by the way. There is something so douchey about decorating with a Buddha if you are not a Buddhist. That's like, I'm sorry. I know some of our listeners right now are going, but mine in my garden is really cool. Nah, it's kind of it's kind of lame. Anyway, uh, yeah, Hindu <laughs> deities all over the place, and uh, you know, Buddhist things. Uh, yeah. the, a, so a. A interfaith coalition oh. has launched a campaign to ask ask to call on these clubs to be more respectful. Oh my god! Of their, of their, of their, you know, of their decor. Have you ever been Which to is... Club Chakra here in town? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have yeah, you? It's, it's it, no. Is there one? <laughs> you didn't. You just made that up. No. It's right next door to Himalayan Kitchen. It's owned oh. by the same people. So I think oh, okay. that they they it's probably okay that they call it sh- Club Chakra. Yeah. But I've always wondered like <laughs> what is that place like? Yeah. <laughs> it's spicy. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, what's funny is that I just shamed people for having Buddhas. As, but fuck it. I'm wrong. Go ahead. This is, you know, it, it's funny because I, I'm of two minds on the thing. Like, okay. A, your gods aren't real, so I don't care very much. <laughs> Right. But also, uh, yeah, I don't want to offend people. Right. It, it's a, it is holy to them. It is sacred to them. And it's not your thing. Well, I you can't just use yeah. somebody else's culture as your decoration. Just like like religious shit that you don't even understand. But man, that guy with the elephant head sure looks wacky. Yeah. I think that they should like crucify Jesus like yeah. once a night at a club. I think it would be amazing. Like. Like flashing lights and lasers yeah. and like stru- uh, and, 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 and like <laughs> crucify Jesus in front of a crowd. I think that would be amazing. Yeah, the I would cross is that. raised up yeah. as, as the music's like. Yeah, and the bass and drops. Flames shoot out of his hand. Yeah. Oh my god! It'd be amazing. Oh man. I think we just. I think we just have that is a that is a registered uh, trademark of TGIA. That is our club idea. If you do it, you have to pay us. Uh, yeah, sure. If uh, clubs ever exist again, never again. Remember when we used to go out in crowds and enjoyed it sometimes? Yeah. Anyway, that was a while ago. Well, Dan, here's a story about people who just can't help themselves but go out and. Make other people sick. Um, okay. I know. I'm sorry. I had two Corona stories, but... Um, it's okay. There's This story comes to us from California, where Governor Newsom uh, has been going head-to-head with the churches, right? Saying... Uh-oh. You know, like, for a while, I think there was, like, there was like a full-on closure. In fact, you yeah. know, that was a thing. Uh, and now they kind of have some rules where... People can go to church, but, like, you're supposed to social distance. Um, right. Like, you're supposed to wear a mask. And in addition to that, the state is asking that um, that unless it's absolutely necessary. Actually, no, no, no. There is no absolutely necessary here. That, that there's no singing. Yeah. Please don't sing. And please right. don't do chants because it's known that these are like that. That's how you really uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, shed virus, right? In, yeah. in large quantities, right? It, it, you are propelling air purposefully harder, yeah. than you normally do. Exactly. Just breathing, and it just expe- and there expels the virus out. And there have been these like they've they've specifically had these sort of. Um, uh, nexuses, I guess, of of spreading, right? That happened right. at like choir practices and stuff like that. Like the, this, right? Like there was that one choir where, like, I mean, people like like almost everybody got sick and people died, right? Yeah. Well, nonetheless, so this is really good advice coming from the state. Uh, it's supposed to be a bit of an order, but nobody's really following. Well, some are following it, but you've got like these big scoff laws. Uh, the likes of, let's see, Sacramento area, uh, Grace Bible Church, um, hmm. has, they've explicitly said, uh, that they won't follow the order, um, because doing so, um, uh, or, or following the order would, 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 uh, they, they would not be showing their obedience to God's word. Um, uh, the elders here at Grace have determined that the, the, the state mandate has encroached upon the essential activities of worship as commanded in Scripture. We will display <laughs> some deference to our authorities, however, and we will not sing as much, but we sometimes do. <laughs> we must sing, right? We are mandated by our beliefs to sing. To sing, right? Because there, there are Scriptures that say, sing out for the Lord or whatever. Right. Yeah. I, I'm going to guess that that doesn't mean you got to do it every week or else. Yeah. And you got to do it in the church or else. And you, yeah, come on. Why, and why not just say, hey, everybody, like, like this is where some good leadership maybe like could have actually helped a little bit where maybe the yeah. state could have like maybe got some like reasonable religious types in the room. Pastors. And, yeah. And said said hey listen like we need to come what what how do we phrase this 
right? How do we talk yeah. about this, right? Like, what are some of the suggestions that we could make? Like, it's not that you can't sing, but maybe suggest that you go home and sing, or maybe take the congregation outside and sing, or <laughs> like, or, like we don't want you to not, like, if you feel like you need to be worshiping, we don't want to stop you from that, right? We just yeah. want you to be safe. And, yeah. and, and, and we believe, right, like, like, you might as well just say it. We believe that God wants you to be smart and to take care of yourself, right? Yeah. And then he'll meet you halfway. You could say that, right? Like, I would say that. Like, yeah. Like, just you can, like, look, speak you a little speak bit their of their language. language. Right, exactly. And, like, and just get them on board with, like, this idea of, like, no, 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 no. Like, Christians throughout their history have, you know... Have, have found every way that they possibly can to to worship and the, nobody's going to stop you from worshiping right like make them heroes right, right? yeah exactly. you, you're you're a christian hero by <laughs> by not seeing today here That's with right. your fellow christians like march on christian soldiers and find solutions just, that worked though for 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 different kinds of congregations instead of just like like i actually kind of just like well if you're going to let them meet up how do you tell them not to do certain things right yeah. like just if they're not safe just keep them shut down <laughs> right like the this the the, the, the the federal court decision like sided with california and said yeah they can shut you down so why yeah. not just keep them shut down yeah well <clears throat> oh. i don't yeah it's all okay it's all stupid i'm pissed dan all <laughs> right well uh i'm gonna Close us out with our our good friends from the S, uh, the the TST the Satanic Temple, mm. uh, who are uh, who have always been fighting the good fight since their inception, uh, trying to keep any semblance of a wall between church and state. Um, I don't know if you heard about it, but you know during this time of 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 trying to right a few wrongs uh, in our country's uh uh relationship with uh, racism mm. we've we've changed some things we've taken down some monuments yeah uh and <clears throat> mississippi was the last state in the union to keep to still have the confederate flag or the confederate uh image on their state flag right and they're finally going to get rid of it but of course, you may have heard that uh, they have the the law that gets rid of the 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 retired the old flag and said the new flag can't have that Confederate right. imagery on it. Also required that it had the phrase "In God We Trust." We talked about that, right? Well, the Satanic Temple is stepping in. They they have they have written a letter to Attorney General Lynn Fitch uh, saying that the Basically, that in God we trust is another way of excluding a whole bunch of Mississippians, which is true, and that they will sue nice. if, they, if it gets put on there. And they make, again, always with these guys, they make exactly the right point, which is, you know, I think Lucian Greaves said something about if you can put, just imagine the words in Satan we trust on the flag and think about how that makes you feel. Right. Now, imagine how... And this is a direct quote. He said, if you can imagine that, then you might imagine how atheists, Satanists, and other people of non-theistic faiths could feel excluded by the addition of In God We Trust to the state flag. Right. I, you know, they're always, they're so spot on. Yeah. Uh, nothing will come of this, of course. No, of course not. Be, the ve uh, the vexillologists be... of America suing would have just as much effect. Right. And they, well, and they yes. have, they have equal standing in my mind as to an, ob an objection to there being words on the flag somebody pointed yeah. out i can't remember uh where i saw this but it was something tgia we got some feedback somewhere where somebody had pointed out that there was a certain number of uh states a large number of states and we know this to be true uh that have words on their flags um yeah. i mean it's it's it, it doesn't make it right Right. I think ours does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, of course ours does. Our, we yeah. have a hideous flag. Ours breaks a number of rules. Uh, we have a, a state seal on our yeah. flag, right? Which is a major no-no. That's big no-no. <laughs> and then also, I think we have like a 
the date of the like we have numbers yeah. on our flag yeah um also just not desirable so it's so like again right like this is an objection that i have for all flags with words <laughs> Not just in God we trust. <laughs> oh, Even though goodness. that's well, doubly for me, that's doubly offensive. Yeah, the Satanic Temple's fun. I I actually saw a thing. Uh, uh, basically, USA Today did an interesting fact check because apparently there have been very outraged calls going around now that you know when now that Confederate monuments are coming down and mm-hmm. flags are 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 changing and stuff. Mm-hmm. A whole bu- apparently. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, people are calling angrily for the removal of satanic statues and monuments and Baphomet statues all throughout our country, <laughs> which is great because there aren't any. It's there's literally there's one Baphomet statue at the satanic temple's headquarters in Salem, Massachusetts, and that's it. Yeah. And, but people, because the Satanic Temple has been so effective at scaring the bejesus out of everybody, <laughs> the, they've got this Mandela effect of like you, believing that they are that they have managed to get Satan put up as a as a monument all over our country. It's <laughs> awesome. That's amazing. So there you go. Listen, kids, if you guys have anything you'd like to say to us, if you want to call us out or call us in or whatever it is you want to say, or to just us, call us, please. Up. Or, or call us up. Do that. The first thing you could do is write to us. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com is the address. Or call and leave a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yep. Go to the Facebook page. Facebook.com slash TGIA Atheist. Click the like button. And while you're there, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It's a closed group. We will let you in. Also find us on Twitter at TGI Atheist. Yeah. More show coming along. Hey, Dan. Yes? Uh, So, it's not often that we actually get the chance to play audio from uh, a church service. Normally, it's lunatics just talking on the internet. Right, um, yeah. Oftentimes, or or they have some dumb TV show like Pat Robertson yeah, or something exactly, like that. Exactly. Right. But um, we're actually going to play a little bit from a very odd moment at the Bethel Church in Redding, California. We've talked about them before. Um, they're those. Yeah. They're lunatics. Right. They bug their neighbors, yeah. and uh, I can't remember everything that's they're, crazy they're, about them. But well, what what we need to know for the purposes of this thing is that they. Take the idea, you know, all of these, uh, the the clips that we play, we have so many people who are like, the magical thinking is strong, you know, they're going to, mm. they're going to repel a hurricane or they're going to, you know, Kenneth Copeland has made uh, COVID-19 a thing of the past multiple times. He has <laughs> solved it multiple times. Right, exactly. These guys take magical thinking to a real, real interesting place. Well, Pastor Marlene got a prophetic vision right before this event, and she saw us doing a prophetic act that was going to be very, very historic. One of the movies that has really touched my heart is Lord of the Rings. So I encourage you, if you haven't done this in the proper order, you must put oil in your door and then go in front and repeat this act with us. And Gandalf stands in his authority in front of the demon and says it. The first time he hits it and it doesn't happen. The second time Gandalf does it again and still the demon is not obeying. And at the third time, Gandalf puts both of his hands on the staff and he said, I said... And he hits it. And that authority is what we are talking about that can only be released by an apostolic decree. We decree and declare that racism will end. It's over in the ecclesia from this night forward in Jesus' mighty name. Let's slip it up and bang it. We need you to agree with us. Thou shalt not pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Seriously, the well, name of Jesus Christ. I mean, that's oh like, my god, Jesus! I Christ. need you guys. We should have what maybe painted a picture beforehand. Hell? So retroactively, go back in your minds and <laughs> listen to this again in your heads. Only just know that there's this group of, uh, and it's and it is a a, a panoply of of ethnicities and and races up on that stage. Mm-hmm. It's six or seven people all holding a large stick and then like trying to do the the Ian McKellen Gandalf you shall not pass <laughs> thing but it's the weakest sad like oh. getting six or seven people to all like bang the stick at the right time it it doesn't work it's it is a it's a mess they really needed to coordinate better <laughs> practice maybe but I, I mean if you're if you're going to do <laughs> A stunt, a visual stunt. Well, maybe, maybe give it a practice. But what I want to know is like, what does the Lord of the Rings have to do with <laughs> anything? Like, y- yeah, like if 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 their little Bible thing isn't enough, right? What are they admitting to, right? Like, why do they, like, right? Why do they need like the Lord of the, the Lord of the Rings? Yeah, the well, Lord I mean, of, like this thing's filled with like all sorts of magic and like sorcery and yeah, right. Like this is where they go. And on any on any other day, they don't want their kids even watching this shit. I bet, right? Like, yeah. But they're referencing it in church. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> I, I'm sure these people wouldn't let their kids watch the Smurfs for Christ's sake. Oh my God! Wow. Which how dated are we now? <laughs> like you just dated our, our podcast. <laughs> No, there was there was a kid on my block when I was when I was you know growing up, whose mother wouldn't let him watch the Smurfs because <laughs> you know Gargamel was magic. Oh my God! You literally like a third of our listenership just went. Like, I don't even know what the who? fuck he's talking about. The what's now? The sm- all right. Smurfs? Uh, we had some folks write into us. Uh, this is from Gustav, who says hi. I was listening to episode number 405 where you spoke of a Swedish imam who was fined $300 for hate speech. Do you remember that? That was a while ago. That was a while ago. Yeah, I I vaguely remember this. Yeah. Uh, Gustav goes on. uh, In Sweden, we try to promote diverse cultural associations by grants from the government. So if a group has invited a convicted imam... Grants can be withdrawn, and now it's not $300, but millions, depending on the size of the association. Same goes for churches. I just thought that was really interesting. Huh. Okay. They can, once somebody seems to be branded uh, with hate speech, uh, like nobody's going to invite them anywhere because oh, they'll lose okay. huge grants. Huh. Anyway, uh, thanks for that, Gustav. Um. Yeah, apparently Gustav is working back. They're his, working his way backwards through our back catalog, which is uh, that's nuts. But <laughs> enjoy, please enjoy. Uh, hey, Frank and Dan, this is from Isaac. Uh, I was fascinated. This is sorry, Frank. This is in reference to uh, oh, I don't remember the woman's name that we talked about last week, and her uh, who who had left. Was it last week? She left the the Mormon Church and had some criticisms. Of the uh, the rest of the ex Mormon oh, yeah. crowd, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Met Harrison's her name, yeah, yes. Uh, anyway, uh, Isaac, I was fascinated by the neophyte ex Mormon. You seemed to be skeptical that she was being pressured to drink, but I suspect she's just being exposed for the first time to normal American culture. Hmm. The pressure to drink alcohol is abundant, even for non Mormons. It comes in the form of advertisements in the spaces used for social gatherings. Hmm. Implicit in the stories of a lot of people, uh, uh, stories a lot of people like to tell, and sometimes in ex- in explicit pressure from people who seem to find it threatening when someone doesn't drink. Mm-hmm. I've experienced all of those pressures myself. And I think that's fair. I, yeah. I have heard some people say, come on, have a drink. Come on. But like, not grown ups. You know what I mean? Like that was in the 20s or in their 20s or no, whatever. I th- I, I guess some grown-ups yeah, do that. Yeah. I, yeah. Problem drinkers are problem drinkers. <laughs> it's true. That is true. But also, um, yeah, no, that actually is is a really good point. 
Um, sure. Because like we're looking at it and we're sort of used to just regular, you know, whatever drinking culture we're regularly exposed to. And for somebody who's never been around it, it could seem uh, uh, that, that there's more pressure than maybe there there really is. Right. That pressure yeah, to maybe. fit in, if nothing else. Right. Yeah. So. Huh. Yeah, I think I think that that's very possible. I, but I also think that she was wildly overstating her case for effect. Oh and yeah, for sure. She was absolutely. She she like other yeah people do experience that, and sometimes it's it's an undue amount of pressure, and right. that's uncomfortable and not cool. Yeah. I actually got on. But she her she was still Twitter, dopey. Uh, after the show. And uh, and I was looking at one of her more recent tweets, and it was essentially a poll, um, and she was she was saying, "Well, it doesn't look like writing about ex Mormons is going to be my future. What else do you guys <laughs> think I may maybe should spend my time on?" <laughs> I don't think Did, she got a very good reaction from the ex Mormon oh, community. Oh, poor dear, poor lady. Poor dear. Okay. Uh, Dan in the Catskills wrote in to us. Hi, guys. Uh, I felt compelled to write in after hearing a listener say, as a gay man who shoots at guns and works in, uh, in a machine shop, mm-hmm. he is told he doesn't fit the mold. Just wanted to let you know that it goes both ways, so to speak. I'm a straight man who plays classical flute in operas, symphonies, and ballet. I've been taught... I've been taking grief about my sexual identity versus the instrument I play my entire life. Aww. When I was young, I saw it as, as a good way to meet chicks. And I was right, because I married another flutist. Uh, I believe the actual word is fluter. <laughs> uh, and now <laughs> we have two awesome teenage boys, neither of whom has any interest in playing the flute. <laughs> anyway, I just... Okay. That's true. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's it's fair to say that you can't tell who people like by sort of what they do. No, I think we need you to you... just accept that 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 yeah. things are that the world is surprising, and people yeah. people in particular can be very surprising. They and and you don't have it figured out. Yeah, that's the other thing. Right. Is that no matter how long you've lived and how many people you know, you don't have it all figured out yet. There's no, there's no formula for humans because we're wacky. <laughs> so do we have some folks to thank? We do indeed, Dan. Uh, we have four new patrons on Patreon. Uh, these kind of okay. folk went to our website, Woo. thankgodimatheist.com, and clicked on the support tab. Um, so yeah, we have two new deacons. We have Rick okay. and Lisa. Thanks to the both of you. And we have peace be upon you. <laughs> we have a new teacher, uh, Melanie. Um, you get Great. to set up the sacrament, Melanie. Yes. And then we very, have a new very priest, fancy. priest oh. Gary. And all you get to do is say a little prayer before the sacrament. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's break amazing. the bread! You get to break the bread, Gary. That's yeah. kind of fun. It's, it's a. I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, the fact that we're in, inducting you into Mormon priesthood <laughs> is a very special thing. <laughs> <laughs> but we only do it because we love you and because we're really appreciative of your patronage. Mm. Now, if you guys out there aren't a patron and think to yourselves, you know, uh, maybe I could be, maybe I should be. Well, go to thankgodimatheist.com, click on the support tab, and then look. You go to the you go to the Patreon page. You decide how much you're going to support us. It's not, and we're not we're happy with any amount of support. Oh yeah. Uh, it's just that the more you give, the better a person you are. That's yeah. all. So you know that's about you. And, that's not about us. And Dan, we, uh, yeah. not for nothing, uh, the campaign that we've been running, um, we're really close to the final goal. Um, oh, that's true. We're like nine uh, new patrons away from hitting the final goal. At that point, the show goes ad-free. Done. Totally. Completely ad-free for everyone. So you're kind of doing a great good deed. Not, yeah. not just for yourself, so, because like, if, if you go become a patron, you immediately get an ad-free version of the show available to right. you each week. Um, but you're doing it for everyone, which is cool. Yeah. So. Yep. Uh, 
and uh, just yeah, just remember that if you can't give that way, you, there are other ways for you to help us out. You can give us five stars mm-hmm. wherever stars are available. You can tell friends about our show. Word of mouth is super useful. Uh, all of these are ways that that you can help people to find us, and that's super helpful too. Absolutely. And there's one more person to thank: our Lord and Savior, our, our top donor, Davis. Oh, praise to you. Uh, we kneel and pray to the <laughs> O Davis. And uh, stay tuned. We'll talk some more. So, Dan. Uh, yes. Uh, America. America. Here it is. The very, just the way it rolls out of your mouth. America. Uh. The mm. land we're not allowed to leave. <laughs> we're so free. We're so, <laughs> our freedoms are so plentiful right now. Let freedom ring, but not in other countries because they don't want us right now. <laughs> oh, man. it's You know, here's the thing. This country, we were raised, uh, I was raised, and I'm sure that you, I mean, you and I are the same age. I'm, we have uh, roughly the generally, same age. You are, you are a bit older than me. I, I am a month and a few days older than you, so that's, I mean, obviously I have that extra wisdom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I but, must uh, always, I find myself deferring to it yes, all the time. Yeah. Well, I'm, my beard also has more gray in it than you, so yeah, that's, it's that, going, that's the proof it's going of the quickly, wisdom. Dan. Uh, yeah, I got, I got hit fast. It was like, I look at pictures of me from five years ago and I'm like, holy shit, that's, that I went know. quick. I know, I know. I'm an old man now. <laughs> and, you know, as an old man, I'm going to reminisce a little bit about our youth and about our childhood when we were raised to believe that this country of ours, this land of ours, is the best country in the world, bar none, absolutely no exceptions. You can't deny it. <laughs> We've got freedom. Nobody else has that in the whole world. I know. We've got... We got the best songs. We got, uh, you know, we we got stars and stripes forever. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, the patriotic songs. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. They're so good. It's yeah, exactly. Get, it's uh, it's give me a marching it's an unbroken band line. any day, right? Playing <laughs> some uh, some uh, patriotic marching you songs. To, you need to polish up your trombone and get back out and <laughs> get back out there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just get get some John Philip Sousa going. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing that that was the line that we were fed. Yeah, it was really this sense of this the amazingness of this country, and oh, yeah. and that was the way that they pursued this line of reasoning wasn't just to tell us, but actually to lie to us directly to our faces about our country's history, <laughs> completely rewrite the whole thing. <laughs> Make heroes out of a bunch of awful human beings. Mm. Like, it's kind of amazing. They're they're now sort of just starting to broach the idea that maybe we don't, you know, we we don't deify Christopher Columbus. Oh my God. And maybe maybe not all of the founding fathers were literally perfect humans sent <laughs> by god to guide the world into a new age like it's this is literally the thinking that we were raised with so now we look at a country that is uh maybe coming to terms with a few of its like manifold myriad flaws right and uh yeah it there's a little bit of tarnish on that on that shine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What do you we recently like this week we celebrated celebrated. We had a 4th of July. We passed <laughs> yeah, the I don't, date. I don't know July that I celebrated 4th. much. I got into a swimming pool. Yeah. That was it. Alone. Uh, well, right? two other people. Or with, but like, yeah, with two other people. But, but no, no no strangers. No, crowd. no crowd, no strangers right. and and yeah. uh and that was lovely. It had been since you know, last summer, um, yeah. there haven't been many opportunities for, you know, poolside or in pool recreation this summer. I know I ain't swum in a while. Yeah, you know, and uh, and you know, like I have to finagle access to a pool, 
but it's right. usually finagleable. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so 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 Fourth of July, obviously not a big day on my calendar. Normally, um, I'm annoyed by the whole thing mostly. <laughs> um, yeah, not, I don't because I don't like jingoism the fireworks, and I don't. Yeah, the sentiment of the of the day um, is is really off putting. But I remember being a kid. And uh, I I can kind of remember like the first Fourth of July that I was aware of, uh-huh. and I feel like, and I might be like wrongly remembering this, but I feel like there was a rodeo involved, <laughs> right? <laughs> and sure, and I remember there because I just feel like there was like, um, we were up in like some stands, right? And yeah. there was stuff going on. And then at a certain point, there was like, it turned ridiculous patriotic, right? Like, I mean, a, a ro- good rodeo is going to have the, the the national anthem and somebody run, you know, on a horse, you know, running around holding the flag, right? Yeah, uh, sure. They're going to have all that kind of stuff. But like... Fourth of July, it's going to be nuts, and then there's fireworks, and I and right. I remember this. If you're not wearing a star and a stripe, yeah. you're going to be killed. <laughs> it's murder. And I just have this 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 memory of like like people talking about the best country in the world, and you know, oh, yeah. God's you know, God's country, and all that kind of crap, yeah. and and I and I don't know if I like questioned like what are they talking about like to my mom. <laughs> But I know she like I remember her like reinforcing it and all that kind of stuff. And so yeah, it's it's what you grew up with, and that's just yeah. that that was a sort of the the city level. That was you know the town we lived in. Right. The, then you go to Mormon church and pr- pretty much any Christian church in this country, and it's America, America, America. We're so fucking it's more special. Of the same, yeah. You know. Well, and especially Mormonism because Mormonism was was created here yeah. well and this was the so there's something the only there's so, country like, that that it could yeah. possibly have come forth in and we are a, an elect and special you know country and bloody 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 yeah blah. and so this is where this is where the goddamn garden of eden was according to mormonism right mormonism like the garden of eden adam and eve in missouri yeah. that's how american mormonism is right and i you know so i just remember like you know, leaving the country, you know, when, when I was, you know, we went to like Canada a couple times when I was a kid. Um, Mm -hmm. and then like, you know, for my mission, you know, going to Italy and it was always just like, Hmm, what are these people doing? Right. (laughs) It's like, why aren't they basically worshiping me right now? (laughs) Shouldn't they be falling down and (sighs) on their knees and praising me for being American? (laughs) And, you know, like, and I'll fall prey to, you know, and I, in the past, you know, like, I really liked the West Wing, right? Like, yeah. Like, and, and the West Wing is all just like, you know, America's, you know, like, look how awesome. I, I mean, the show's basically, look how awesome it could be, right? Right. Um, in a lot <laughs> of ways. Um, it's Sorkin brand jingoism. <laughs> but it's just like, you know, it's, it's an easy thing to fall into and, and, and. It, it is nice, I think, to be. Um, I mean, it, it's a painful process that this country is going through right now, obviously. Um, yeah. But thank God, it's something seems to finally be sticking on on these things that we need to be reckoning with as as a nation. Um, on a few and of hope, the things, and, yeah. and, and I hope that we just get a little bit more of a level head throughout more of the population about just you know who we are and like like america can be a a force for good right like and and that is true like until very until recently i would say i mean not we are definitely not a country without our inner our sins internationally right but um you know it the good probably outweighed the bad in a lot of ways but Hmm, that's a bold statement. I think so. I am, no, 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 no. I'm not sure I'm there, but maybe. I think that American <laughs> leadership is a real thing, right? Like it's as sure. a superpower. I think we we wielded 
that power um, as good as you could do, right? In in a lot of ways, right? Um, with some and, ex- with some notable exceptions. Dan, I entered this whole thing with a caveat, right? Like <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just I'm I'm like con- I am I'm not continuing the okay, caveat good, as good. we so go, lest anybody misunderstand exactly what I'm saying, right? Right. Um, I and I think that we can be that, and I think that you know that we sh- we should try to be that force for good but like yeah i don't think it's a given and i think that believing that it's a given is part of the problem right now that that like because it's almost like it's so the idea of america for so so many people in this country is so sacred right that right. it's sacrilege to say anything bad and it's like or to to, to, to point out where we could improve right right and it makes this yeah. situation where we can't improve right like we literally cannot make progress at this point on 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 critical issues things that we've been trying a really fucking long time to get right and we just can't right. do it because well why we why fix it you know it's perfect right there's the problem is that there's a there the the jingoists there's this dogmatic sense and that's the problem is that we've got a whole lot of people who are used to living with dogma yeah and they've got this dogmatic sense of this country, which is that it has to stay the same. We've got one constitution, we got Ugh. one blah blah blah, and everything's supposed to stay as it is. And and you know, if you say that it's not good in any way, then you're then you're criticizing the whole country, and you how dare you? Yeah. And so like, yeah, I I feel like that. Yeah, all the change is slow and painful and laborious mm. yeah. because we have to fight through all of that to even get to – and sometimes we have to, like, you know, break a bunch of shit <laughs> just so that people, like, wake up a little bit and go, oh, wait, maybe they've got a point. Maybe something is wrong. So there you go. I Here's my question. I This is what I want to close on. I because there's the opposite side of this, right? The the jingoists are one problem in America. The far other side of things, the far left side of things, is also problematic. Mm-hmm. Everything's wrong. Everything's bad. Right. All our country does is negative. Mm-hmm. You know, our flag represents hate and evil, and that's all. Yeah. So. I think that's equally problematic and and also equally dogmatic and doesn't leave room for mm, equal, nobody's leaving room for compromise yeah, and that's it. which is the only way that change is actually yeah. happening. You can't even so, have a conversation about it, right? Right, exactly. With anybody on either side right. of you know and on either extreme. Yeah. And I have to admit, I'm kind of I I'm I'm closer to that. I'm closer, you know, I don't I see someone w- displaying the flag uh you know in front of their house or from their truck or whatever <laughs> and i assume bad things about that person well from their truck dan <laughs> right <laughs> right on their clothes or whatever i mean anyway, if it's an american flag on a prius i would be a little confused <laughs> right i'd be like what are is are they being ironic because we, we actually saw a um a biden sticker on a uh, a hummer the other day uh, interesting and we were just like, both dave and i were like what's going on there <laughs> see you can't judge books by their cover it's, you don't and he's know. like you can't he's judge like, a book by its hummer. there's no way there's no way. And I'm like, I think that it's possible for somebody who owns a Hummer to want, you know, not yeah. Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else. God bless him. <laughs> so here's so here's my final question to you. Do you think there will be a time in your life when you look at the American flag and feel pride again? Pride. Um... Or feel some sense of a, a, a warm, glowy, happy feeling when you see that emblem. I think if we rejoin the nations, uh, the, 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 the 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 WHO, the, yeah, the, if if we if we rejoin sort of our our allies, our, our traditional allies, um, and continue to work toward, um, a, a ostensibly work toward a 
you know, a better future and, and make sure that we continue all the, you know, because I mean, the one area, like the humanitarian stuff that this country has done has been pretty significant through the, sure. through the decades. Um, and, um, and that's stuff to be proud of. Right. Yeah. Um, I think the Peace Corps is something to be proud of. Um, and, and I think that if, if we can, if by and large, we can just rip out this cancer <laughs> of, of, uh, that, that has been plaguing us for s- probably always, right. Of just Maybe. this, this sense of this nation as being a, a blessed by God, right. Right. Um, I think if if we could ever get to that point, if we could, you know, like if we were a majority atheist country, I'd probably feel pretty good about the flag. You know, why not? And that, you know what? It's funny because I asked that question about like, will there be a time in our lives when that happens? There, that could happen in our lifetimes. Yeah. Majority atheist. That could happen. It's possible. All right, well, now, I'm, now, right? now I've got hope. I'm just going to, well, I'm I literally going to stop you because I don't want to end without, I want to hold this hope. Well, I don't think that, that just the mere fact that every, like more pe- more atheists than not, right? Or at least more non-believers, however, however people define themselves, right? Right. Um, it's just that there would be such a better chance for uh, reason, and, and rational yeah. thought to be the, right. the prevailing, you know, uh, way that we hold have a, have our discourse. Like, I don't care if everybody agrees. I don't care if half those people, you know, are conservatives, right? Like, as long as we can all be on the same page about, well, we're we're going to have a rational conversation <laughs> about right. problems. If that's possible, with, with, then I don't know if with that's acknowledging. Even possible. <laughs> with acknowledge, or at least acknowledge or and hope that everybody is sort of in good faith actually trying to solve the issue yeah the i mean problem. we've got a lot of work we have to restore our democratic institutions right we, yeah. we have to uh probably do some constitutional reforms really quite yeah. honestly in order to Un- to fix a couple a of things whole- um, undo a whole bunch of gerrymandering undo, and all yeah, sorts like of if, if we could get some of that stuff done, then I I have hope for the future. But as it is right now, like it's misery. <laughs> it's a it, it it's it's, it's a awful. very ugly place Ugh. right now. Anyway, hey everybody, have a great week. Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot Listen. people were listening. <laughs> right? Yeah, we were just we were just descending into our own madness. Uh, <laughs> on our own um but there are people listening and if any of you listeners would like to take us to task yeah. or, or 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 chime in on any of this please feel free to do so podcast at thank god i'm atheist.com is the is the email or call and leave us a voicemail message the telephone number is 424-666-8442 yep go to the facebook page facebook.com slash tgi atheist and click the like button and while you're there search for the tgia members only lounge and request to join it is a closed group but we will let you in also find us on twitter at tgi atheist yeah thanks to all of the people who help us out with our social media and a big thanks goes out to the red rock hot club and gordon johnston for the use of their music and thanks to all of you guys for tuning in. We appreciate you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.